Now today's Through the Decades Retrospectacle. Take 15 girls all wearing miniskirts and invite them to break a world record held by a college group in America. The big squeeze is to see if you can compress all these miniskirted misses into one tiny mini. It was 1966, the height of what was known as swinging London and minis. Both of them were all the rage. The miniskirt, one of the defining fashions of the 60s, was a creation of British designer Mary Quant who was making what she described as easy, youthful, simple clothes. She credited customers at her iconic boutique for the mini, saying she herself wore very short skirts and they requested even shorter ones for themselves. Quant said of mini wearers, their femininity lies in their attitude. She enjoys being noticed, but wittily. She is lively, positive, opinionated. It was a breath of fresh air in the wake of the post-World War II austerity that had lasted through much of the 1950s. Quant's high public profile and her induction as a member of the Order of the British Empire by the Queen at Buckingham Palace saw the miniskirt spread beyond a simple street fashion into a major international trend. Minis were also championed by top British models like Twiggy and Jean Shrimpton, who created a stir when she wore a short white shift dress to Australia's highly conservative Melbourne Cup. Across the pond, Peggy Moffat was a face and figure of American designer Rudy Gernreich, who was among the first to offer miniskirts and dresses in the US. The rise in hemlines gave rise to another trend of the times. Colored tights and tights with patterns replaced stockings and suspenders. But by the 1970s, the fashion industry had returned to longer skirts, the midi and the maxi, and trousers both tight and flared would steal the show. Perhaps it was no coincidence that hemlines were lengthened as a feminist movement was on the rise. <laughs>